Heals welcomes you to the third Euro Symposium on Healthy Aging. Heals is the largest non-governmental organization in Europe promoting and advocating scientific research into longevity and biogerontology. Thanks to generous support from our sponsors, Heals was able to organize this conference. The conference will highlight the cutting edge of knowledge in the field of biogerontology and provide a unique opportunity for researchers, government officials, biotech executives and advocates from around the world to meet, network and forge new scientific collaborations. Thank you very much for the invitation. Um, so my group is working on cellular senescence rather than organismal aging. It's a more cell-based analysis. So it's a little bit different, uh, but I hope I can um, provide you some insights about the aging aspect as well. So we are, uh, cancer, I'm a Cancer Research UK uh, senior group leader. Uh, so we are focus is cancer rather than aging, um, but we are developing our interest into the aging um, uh, field as well. So let's see how. So our um, the title of today is cell cell communication in senescent cell. This is one of the biggest uh, uh, topic at the moment. Okay. So what is senescence? So senescence originally uh, identified in this uh, human diploid fibroblast is uh, more than 50 f uh, years ago by Hayflick. So if you culture human diploid fibroblast, normal cells in the culture, and they stop growing. So the, here this is a uh, population doubling. So cell proliferation stop growing after the certain number of replication. This is called replicative senescence. It turns out it's due to the telomere shortening. A similar phenotype similar phenotype can be achieved by a number of different types of uh, stimuli, stress. Right? Oncogenic stress, which is our interest, and chemotherapeutic or DNA damage or oxidative stress. Now actually, this telomere shortening is, turns out to be a uh, uh, DNA damage signal in your senescence. So, so there are numbers a number of uh, uh, different type, diverse stimuli can induce senescence, like apoptosis. Many things can induce similar phenotype. So what's the mechanism for this? This is very, very complicated here. So uh, apoptosis is more like a linear pathway. It's very good genetics um, uh, model exists. But the uh, senescence, because this is a collective phenotype of many uh, effector mechanisms. I would say that the sub-phenotypes associated with the individual uh, effector mechanisms, and then the combination or uh, which is predominant, right? So depending on the uh, uh, components of the effector mechanism, the entire severity or, or phenotypic quality would be different. So senescence is not just single entity, it's more diverse collective phenotype. So we, and this is just an example we, what, that we are interested in the group. So, we, so this, is, uh, uh, this is called senescence associated heterochromatin. So this is, um, I was, uh, when I was in the uh, um, uh, Scott Lowe's group as a postdoc in the States, uh, so we identified this one. So I'm still working on this one. Uh, this is associated with the high order chromatin biology. So I'm not going to talk about this one today. So we recently published um, a new view of P53, particularly associated with uh, uh, senescence. We call this is chronic P53. You might want to look at this one. There's a lot of interesting database. You might, it might be helpful for, uh, useful for many people. And we also identified autophagy mTOR signaling as a very important effect and mechanism for senescence. Um, so we haven't, um, so actually this, we made an interesting connection between this one and the SASP. Uh, senescence associated secretory phenotype, how senescence has communicated. This is the main topic in today's talk. So I'm not going to talk about this one as well, but uh, we have a very exciting um, new story about this one um, in the uh, near future, hopefully. Um, but today I'll talk about this one. Okay, uh, before, uh, before I'm going to the detail, so what's the connection between senescence and aging? Right, so this is, uh, I took this one from our recent review article. Um, 
So in a sense, I'm strictly speaking, um, talking about the cellular level. And then aging is the organismal level, or maybe organ level. Okay. So that this is the, this is a very important definition. Uh, if when I talking about senescence or aging, so aging from senescence is relatively simple, right? So that it's been shown that at senescence cells, I mean the sen cells showing the senescence number of senescence uh, markers, are identified had been identified in the older individuals, in, even in human or rodent, although the cells from all the individual become senescence in vitro more easily. This is really, really controversial. But at least we do see some correlation here. But this is more important thing: the senescence could senescence be a cause of aging? Right? So this is a really critical question. Two examples I can think of: like around 2006, a bunch of papers suggesting the age-dependent senescence in the progenitor cells could be a cause of senescence or the more recently I think this is probably the, the many people are interested in the elimination right the killing of senescent cells in vivo extend the lifespan in rodent in mouse mice so this is this is a it's a, it's a very very um, uh, interesting topic at the moment so um, so senescent cells, I said, uh, this is the definition of senescent cells is a stable cell cycle arrest by number of different stimuli. So I call this one the autonomous tumor suppressor mechanism, right? Because um, uh, cells cannot proliferate anymore, even if they have an oncogenic activity, continuous oncogenic activity, like nevi or moles. Those are oncogenic induced senescent benign tumors. Right, they are with us for lifelong, almost, right, with a uh, mostly B rough oncogene activity, but they never, almost never progress in melanoma. So this is autonomous, but if you look outside of cells, senescent cells secrete a bunch of uh, cytokines or metaproteases, many things, growth factors. This is called SASP. And some, some of the, uh, the depending on the uh, sending cells or depending on the receiving cells, the, uh, the, the downstream effect can be different. It can be pro senescence or pro or, or tumor suppressive, or sometimes it's pro tumorigenic. But an interesting thing is that this can att um, attract the immune cells. So these guys can eliminate this one. This is a life cycle, or more physiological life cycle of senescence, which you can find in wound healing, for example. A profound impact on uh, on extracellular matrix. So it's a senescent cells. Autonomous part is we we are still thinking this is a tumor suppressor mechanism, but entire uh, as a net effect, it is extremely context dependent. So the, uh, just showing the dynamic process of oncogene induced senescence, right? So uh, like nevi, some cases, benign tumor or pre-malignant tumors, pre-neoplastic tumors, have uh, uh, followed this one. Right? So first, uh, if you have an oncogenic RAS overexpression, for example, the initial phenotype is mass, uh, mitotic burst, because this is an oncogene, right? cells proliferate fast, but then senescence machinery comes in, so they stop growing. Right? So this uh, in vivo case, this is a, uh, often uh, preneoplastic or preneoplastic pre uh, benign tumor. And then, so the, uh, because of the SASP, the microenvironment changes, and some SASP can activate senescence machinery in the neighboring normal cells. But uh, now we've also found that the cell cell contact can have another impact, another layer of cell non autonomous. Um, mechanism for the cell cell uh, 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 senescence cell propagation. So we call this a secondary senescence. This is quite new theory, so it's not fixed term. We just came up with the, uh, making up this terminology for this talk. And then these guys are, like I said, attract immune cells, and then they, they, if you're lucky, they are gone. So today I'm going to talk about our recent uh, news story. So we identified notch 
as a master regulator of the SAS, right? So, but at the same time, this cell cell contact propagation of senescence is mediated by notch. So this story uh, is just published like last month or so. Um, and the main uh, postdoc who did this work is Matt Hall. And Yoko is a more chromatin person. Then I don't have time to show the Yoko's part, but um, main the essence mainly driven by Matt. So that we started first this experiment um, for this plasma uh, membrane pro uh, protein, proteome. So try to identify the cell surface marker for senescence. Right. So this will be very exciting if you have something specific cells, uh, cell surface marker, but, but today is just focusing on the notch. So the, one of the uh, big uh, hit is notch one. So notch one, what is notch? So notch is a cell surface uh, signaling a molecule, receptor, and then and upon the ligand activation uh, binding, actually ligand is also cell surface, that's why it's a cell cell contact. It's very important for this one. So then it's cleaved, the intracellular domain, I see this a constitutively active form, goes to the nucleus to regulate the transcription. The important uh, pattern is mastermind, and then uh, the one of the uh, canonical target of notch transcription is HES1, right? So now uh, the, the notch has been uh, characterized mainly in the developmental um, context. Disc cell cell contact is important to bio biological patterning. And also in uh, many kinds of stem cells, so this has been a, a, um, um, shown to play a role in the cell fate determination. And as often the case for the cell, uh, stem cell biology uh, related genes, this is also a very important oncogene in some many cancer, uh, many cancer types, but sometimes in the tumor suppressor, depending on the context. But now we show this is uh, uh, important for SASP regulation. So the, because we identify this one as a cell surface molecule, this is just validation of uh, uh, the flow cytometry. The cell surface notch one is activated, not just oncogenic induced senescence, but also DNA damage induced senescence. So many different types of senescence, you can see the upregulation of cell surface notch. But if you look at time course, this is a human diploid fibroblast inducible oncogenic RAS induction. The notch activity, this is the canonical target of notch, only transient in the early stage of senescence, but it disappears. This is correlated to TGF beta, which is one of the uh, SASP components, and also the negative correlation with the canonical pro inflammatory cytokine SASP component, like IL168. So the there seems to be the two phases of SAS, TGF beta phase and the pro inflammatory cytokine phase. It shows the nice correlation with the notch activity. So the simple question we asked is notch is involved in this switch. So the, the, the one we've been using as a tool is dominant negative mastermind. So mastermind is a co-regulator, co-activator here. So you can in using the dominant negative mastermind to genetically block the downstream of uh, notch activity or uh, ectopic intracellular domain of notch, so it's constitutively active notch. So in using an inducible system, we can only act, uh, inhibit notch at this point or only activate or restore notch activity at this point. Right? So, uh, sorry, it's just a busy slide, but just message is if you block here notch activity here, only this person, uh, uh, phase, the TGF beta upregulation is inhibited, IL-1 comes up. If you restore notch, TGF beta is stay high, and IL-1 gone. So the notch seems to be able to regulate this switch of the two different types of uh, SAS. So it's been shown actually a uh, constitutive notch activation can induce senescence phenotype. So we uh, reproduce this sense and inducible notch, this is hours, days, and notch active, uh, this is the target, and then cell cycle is gone around day three, four. The important thing is, so this is doxycycline inducible system, so the colony formation assay, 
uh, uh, using a long-term cell cycle arrest. But even this arrest maintained after doxycycline off, right? So it is not transient. If, if you remove the in, uh, ICD notch, you still see the cell cycle arrest. So the, this is uh, uh, showing the, the details, char detailed characterization of the uh, secretome using micro, uh, RNA seq. So notch induced senescence, RAS induced senescence, and DNA damage induced senescence. Those two are the are very common model system. So you can see the classical uh, SASP components, MMP, lots of MMPs or IL-168 pro-inflammatory cytokines here. So these guys, almost mutually exclusive pattern. So these are blue is ex repressed, red is upregulated. <coughs> On the other hand, TGF beta type or, or pro-fibrotic type is the opposite. Here, NIS is upregulated, but um, the classical senescence phenotype is downregulated. So it's almost mutually exclusive. So now the, to see the dominance between the, the notch and RAS, for example. So here this is RAS induced senescence, notch, notch plus RAS at the same time. Again, we only uh, restore notch at the late stage. Now you see these guys cluster together. So this suggesting, so for instance, like here, this cluster together is suggesting the notch level dictate balance between those two types of cells. The more notch, even in the rust induced senescence, the more notch you do see this type. The less notch you do see this type. So this is a temporal regulation of notch could be the uh, could uh, play a key role for the switching of the two distinct type of cells. So this is the model. Here, this is um, uh, the two phases here, um, and so we I mentioned like a temporal regulation of uh, two types of SASP. But again, the, this is more uh, often described as an immune suppression and or pro-fibrosis. This one is the opposite, pro-inflammatory and anti-fibrosis, some of them, right? So this is not just temporal, but also functionally distinct SASPs can be regulated by notch. So the, what is the fate of long-term uh, senescence? So this, this kind of switch is a very reminiscent of um, the um, tissue damage uh, or tissue regeneration context. This, was, this uh, idea was identified, uh, described first in um, Scott Lodge's group in 2008. Um, this is my previous boss and after I left here. So this once in vivo in the liver, in the liver damage, the senescence, uh, stroma cells become senescence, right, activated. And the initial phase, they are pro-fibrotic, right? But then, um, later time point, they start secreting the pro-inflammatory cytokines, recruit immune cells, and then these guys is gone. If this is, if, we, if this doesn't happen, you may overheal, right? In this case, in the liver case, then cirrhosis would happen or, or exacerbate it. So this is uh, uh, it's, it's a highly consistent with our models. We haven't tested the notch is important in the liver damage model, but we are now looking at more uh, cancer-associated model system. This is another model which I uh, published in 2011 by Lars Zenders group in Germany. So this is oncogen-induced senescence in the liver. So you can overexpress oncogenic RAS by um, hydrodynamic tail vein injection. So this is just the, the very high uh, pressure uh, injection of the, the plasmids, and it gets into the hepatocytes. So we use transposon, so this is the stable uh, uh, overexpression of oncogenic RAS. This is the, the uh, and RAS positive hepatocyte, this is senescent cells surrounded by the small nuclear cells, which are lymphocytes. So, uh, and then the important thing is the time dependent manner, they are eliminated by lymphocytes. So that's what they showed in that nature paper. So we use this system in collaboration with LAS. And the first thing, so we, ident we validated almost near correlation, near perfect correlation with the notch activation, uh, notch induction, 
in uh, NRAS positive senescent cells in the liver. And as they showed along the time, um, that NRAS positive cell um, decreased during, over the time by immune cells. If you block um, the notch pathway using mastermind, dominant negative mastermind, this um, elimination is facilitated. And then at the same time, you do see the CD3, the T cells, recruitment into the liver is, is upregulated. So then inhibiting notch in the same cells, RAS senescent cells, I enhance the clearance of the RAS, uh, oncogenic RAS, or pre-neoplastic cells. So this is the very exciting. So we think it's, it's by modulating notch um, activity, we might be able to uh, facilitate elimination using our own immune system, elimination of pre-neoplastic or damaged senescent cells. So that's the long-term goal next five or so years, we are trying to um, generalize this system. So the um, last few minutes, last few minutes, uh, just, so I showed you the SASP regulation, but now it's a spatial regulation. So only, only a few, few more slides. So spatial regulation will not slide, because as I said, the ligand is also cell surface, right? So cell cell communication is very important for the biological patterning. So the two things, the lateral inhibition or lateral induction, this is a very uh, um, interesting theory. So if notch activation can inhibit its own ligand in the same cell, right? So next cells, neighbor, do have a less notch, right? So if they have a sim they are similar cells, this are less notch means high ligand. So this is a um, positive feedback making a salt and pepper pattern. On the other hand, lateral induction, if notch activity can act with its own ligand in the same cell, is another positive feedback. You do see this pattern, right? We see this is happening in senescence. So this is co-culture model. So the white cells is either normal or notch. Red cell, just simple red, normal red. If you co-culture on the only looking at red cells, Right, forget about white cells, only monitor the red cells and control, right, white, red, and if, the, if white is notch, red cells also become senescent. Here, this is just an example, right, so it, it might be difficult, but the uh, non-fluorescence of red cells are just equally mingled, and here the white cells also become senescent. Important thing, if you sort them out, and look at the tra transcription analysis, the jagged one is at the, speci uh, the specific notch ligand jagged one is upregulated, both white and red cells. So indicating, so the notch cells induce senescent cells here, activate jagged one in the same cells, activate uh, the notch phenotype in the neighbor cells, normal cells, these cells also become notch induced senescent, same phenotype. We can genetically validate it, this one, if you just specifically block notch activity here or specifically knock down jagged one in the white cells, you can reverse, you can rescue this phenotype. So the JAG1 mediated lateral induction of senescence is happening here. What about notch uh, in vivo? This is the last slide. So this is, um, again, going back to the liver model. This um, brown one is an NRAS positive senescent cells. If you look, um, that's very uh, striking, these cells are this, right? The, and the neighbor cells without no initial oncogene activation have a notch activity. This, you can find that many of those. But if you have a dominant negative mastermind, nothing happened. So that to summarize, we identified a notch or a number of other things by a quantitative plasma membrane profile proteomics. And notch signaling seems to be able to um, um, uh, take a balance between the two distinct type of SASP components, right? So the SASP is not just single one chaotic bag, it has to have a uh, fine-tuned um, for the individual components. So inhibiting notch signal m facilitates the immune-mediated uh, elimination of senescent cells. 
and now we do uh, add another layer for the non-autonomous uh, senescence regulation cell cell contact okay i'd like to thank everybody in my group and and uh, uh, particularly matt dra dra drove this um stuff and yoko did a lot of uh, chromatin biology in this uh, notch um, study and then shamith is our uh, collaborator in bioinformatics and then uh, entire core facility and and the pr uh, proteus uh, proteomics was done in in conjugation with collaboration with the Paulinas group, CIMO, and Lars Zender from uh, um, University of Tübingen is the next part of the um, hydrodynamic tailband system. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Narita. So we're running a bit over time, but if you have one quick question. I enjoyed your talk. Thank you. Um, so, um, it is, is it possible that um, what you showed, this uh, switch, uh, can also uh, be operated uh, according uh, to the different context uh, where the cells uh, stay uh, and in different niche uh, and in different organs so that uh, you can explain both mm. uh, pro- and anti-inflammatory uh, um, response uh, according uh, to a sub uh, subtle fine tuning uh, mm -hmm. of the different niche so um the different so notch has notch has a very different distinct um effect in in the different uh um organs or cell types so this is the more to do with the cell fate determination so for but in terms of the senescence or SASP regulation we still don't know how general it is so far it's quite general in the different cell types epithelial cells in in, in, vi in vitro so we are hoping this is quite general so we are thinking is in uh, in this, in terms of senescence uh, any kind of a premalignancy or damaged cells might be eliminated by this way but again uh, pan inhibition of a notch I mean that's been uh, partially successful or uh, disappointing in terms of the uh, side effects. Right? So we we are looking into the more specific or, or, or way to inhibit notch or particularly targeting jagd one, natal receptor, the ligand. Sorry, if I may not be able to f answer, answer your question, but we can we can discuss later. Okay. Thank you again, Dr. Narita.